So uh, let's um, go into the second uh, uh, lecture of um, my uh, short series. Now I think there will be no technical troubles as before. So <clears throat> I will be talking about um, more um, um, focused on uh, dispersional um, types of equations, and I'll start with system of hydrodynamic types. Uh, so which you can just see in here. So in here, you capital is a vector consisting uh, uh, of small um, u1, u2, and so forth, up to n. Uh, and these are dependent variable and independent variables for now are uh, um, p and x. So that's two dimensions, or as physicists sometimes say, it is one plus one dimension, where by first one, they usually mean um, time. But it's artificial splitting into time and space here. So uh, note that this doesn't contain uh, explicitly uh, independent variables. They, they, they enter only through differentiation. In particular, you see such a system is translational invariant along Gnx. Uh, OK, and this is just some matrix. And this gives nonlinearity, but the system is quasi-linear. Uh, so derivative center linearly. Okay, so here components is so here is component writing and a symmetric AIG depending on zero jets of U. Just on values of the um, uh, unknown functions. And uh, the characteristic variety of this is completely reducible. It means it's just like finite number of points in this case. Uh, and it is given as um, uh, points and projective uh, line, so PT divided by PX, where they have this ratio. So basically, you change differentiation by T by multiplication by PT and similar with X. Okay, so we are, of course, uh, free to do a change of variables. In this case, to preserve positive linearity, we would like to, um, to do point change of variables. We would like also to preserve translational variance. So we just change dependent variables. You change to some V of U. And we are interested in such systems that can be diagonalized, so brought to so-called uh, Riemann invariant forms. So uh, that's it, just diagonal system here, right? So you see that a derivative of Ri is equal to uh, x derivative of Ri. So, so that's I pass through u from ui to Ri. That's new variables. So perhaps I have to write here R capital, not V. Okay. There's no summation in here, right? So that's, that's the analogy. Uh, uh, however, uh, the uh, arguments of lambdas uh, are all are R, from R1 to Rn. Okay, so it's not split system, it's the diagonal system. Okay, and this lambda are precisely the entries of characteristic variety. Okay, so here they are. So this is just uh, points in P1. Uh, so there is um, no criterion for uh, diagonalizability of endomorphism field. So because basically this is this A depends on U, right? So we just consider space of dependent variable U. It's like domain in Rn if you want. And um, diagonalizability is given through Hunty's tensor. And that's two form on Rn with the values in Rn. And it's de defined through nine highs. So nine highs tensor. It's a two to one tensor. You give two vector arguments to give vector output, one vector output. And so here it is, you compute AV and AW, then you minus, you move one A away, then you move some other A away, and then you actually bo move both A away and you have double minus, which is plus. Okay, that uh, one of possible uh, a definition of nine highs uh, tensor uh, or a fairly inner highs bracket of A with itself. Some people put minus, some people put one fourth, but that's something which you can find the here's here's nine highs. And then uh, from this, by very similar rule, by, by just changing Lie bracket to nine highs, you define highness. So you see that's very similar to the above line. It's just that they change Lie bracket to nine highs. Tens, right? And uh, of course, when nine highs vanishes, highness vanishes, but, my, but, but that's much milder conditions. So, so range of hindsight in a um, uh, semi-simple case is precisely a diagonalizability. Okay, so um, 
when we think about like uh, dynamical property of equations, I would like to 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 uh, say a couple of words about this. Uh, uh, then, contrary to dispersive equation, dispersion speed is often ex ex exhibits some kind, some kind of singularities, either blows up of values or or, or gradient blow of up something like this. So here's an example: Hof, or some other people call called it Nuisenberger. So uh, here R is the scalar. So R T is equal to R R X. Okay, so that's a scalar equation. Uh, we can rewrite this equation if you want in uh, um, um, differential in exterior differential system form. So one form times this one form. So if you think that R is function of x and t and differentiate this by chain rule, you'll get precisely this equation. Okay, but then as we are on the plane, so so the, the two one form which to zero means that they are proportional. And particularly, this means that if dr is zero, then dx plus r dx is zero. Uh, and this relation actually leads to multivalued solutions. So basically, you see that whenever you would like to concentrate on the maximum value, for example, then it or, or, or of some value of r, then the speed, for example, of x with respect to t propagates proportional to this value r. Uh, this leads to uh, multivaluedness. And um, uh, so um, another way to, to, to see it is the following. So since we agree that these are proportional, so we can actually resolve and get x plus r t is function of r. So, so whenever function you take, this will be a solution. And of course, uh, uh, local solution of this uh, uh, equation are parameterized by one function of one variable. So locally, that's generic solution. Okay, so um, maybe a very short excerpt to Maple to, to um, to see how this thing work. Uh, so, um, uh, no, that's that's wrong story. Sorry, uh, with my maple, maple is uh, here. Okay, so uh, so here, if I put the function f of u equal to u, it's linear. Of course, there will be no gradient catastrophe, uh, and you see, uh, it's just every time a single valued function. Uh, so here it is. Okay, but if I put, for example, cubic thing, right? So you see initial profile here is cubic. Uh, actually, that's not initial profile. Let's make initial profile. This one is cubic. Okay, and then uh, what, what I'm doing here is a vertical x here is u horizontal is x and you consider this time. Of course, u depends on x and t, but then I, I go slices. So t equal to constant. Okay, and now I make movie. When t grows. So basically, my uh, surface uh, solution, uh, I slice into curves. And then you see single, single, and here comes multi values. Okay, if you want, we can watch it on uh, just the surface and space of x, y. So here it is. And you see, well, multi values right here. So nice smooth surface, but anyway. Oh, I can slightly change things, and you can also see uh, other appearance of multi values. Here, so, so I take a bit different cubic here. Okay, and then usually to resolve this multi as there are uh, different things, but one is Hohonia Renke condition. So basically, whenever you see things like this, you cut multi in here, and the idea is that this area is equal to this area, so it's very up to calculus one, it's just computation of area. Uh, and then you, you go uh, here, it's one branch, and then you jump here. To the other branch, which is here. So you'll get this continuity, but you will get simple, single values. And why you do precisely this y, y area shall be equal to area? That's conservation law. So it's actually some kind of integrability is, is used to resolve the story. Okay, back to slides. Okay, so so there is there is a way to to, to resolve um, uh, the singularities. But uh, the imp important thing that when, when we do dispersive perturbation to use high order terms, this actually does regularizations of shocks. Some dispersive uh, dis uh, dispersionless systems are actually not that bad. They are called linear degenerate. And for them, shock doesn't happen. And they're characterized by those conditions. If they characteristic speed lambda, they have to be constant along the those lambda i is uh, i's characteristic. The velocity has to be constant along i's eigenvector. Okay, if, if we take this, of course, 
we, 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 we can write this also on the level of PDs and then it will be not the short condition, but geometrically it's very simple. Okay, and, and this uh, prevents breakdown of smooth initial data. Okay, so um, uh, symmetries and conservation laws. Uh, so hydrodynamic symmetry corresponding, uh, it, it's a bit special kind of symmetry. So it corresponds to a uh, commuting flow. The first one is just our PDE system, this one, our PDE system, and which we assume diagonalizable. So I write it in diagonal form. I look for another one, which will be also diagonal in the same uh, coordinates on, on, depend, on space of dependent variables, but entries here can be different. Okay, that's functions of all uh, zero jets. Uh, and uh, this flow should compute, which means compatibility. So if I compute cross derivative, say they are equal modular the entire system. That's another small difference with symmetries because usually when you check some compatibility conditions, it has to be modular equation actually. And equation is just the first one here. But here's equation plus symmetry. Okay, so it's actually compatibility. Okay, and then if you uh, compute this uh, just for two minutes, then you find out that this, these are conditions. Uh, and that's condition for commuting flows. Now, how sh shall we uh, view this? Sorry, there's just something happened. Okay, uh, so seemingly I just jumped over one slide. Uh, right, I jumped over this slide. So let me go back for a moment. Okay, so there's, there's this slide, unfortunately, I missed. So, uh, uh, so the system is called semi-Hamiltonian. Uh, this will be applied only to di the diagonalizable, or even let's say diagonal system. If characteristic speed satisfies the following correlation. So here you see uh, this derivative of lambda divided by this difference, uh, and then it comes another i's derivative. So it's i, j, and k, and this expression has to be symmetric in i and j. And of course, in order to, to everything to be determined here, all i, j, k have to be different. Okay, just a one example how this can, uh, can happen. So it's one function of one argument, uh, choose arbitrary linear combination, uh, well, ci constant, cr, ci, ri, uh, that's so-called traveling wave ansatz, this one, and put lambda i equal to ri plus phi of this linear combination. So if you take this, that semi Hamiltonian system, this will be satisfied. There are other examples. Okay, so, so this semi Hamiltonian, let me briefly tell you a um, uh, story about it, uh, also relation to Hamiltonian integrability. So it comes from a study by Dubrovin and Novikov of hydrodynamic um, uh, systems. And Novikov conjectures that PDE, Hamiltonian, and diagonalizable implies integrable. Uh, Tsaryov studied this and he found that actually you need weaker conditions. So if you're Hamiltonian diagonalizable, that gives you this semi Hamiltonian condition, which is actually weaker and which implies infinitely many conservation laws and symmetry, which is actually integrability. Uh, the reverse statement is actually wrong. If you'd like to go from semi Hamiltonianity to Hamiltonianity, that's wrong. Uh, but there are points of proof that it kind of exists if you're allowed to, uh, well, not only get differential operator for Hamiltonian structures, but you do differential. So start reconstructing Hamiltonian operators, and then you get a kind of infinite tails, d minus ones and d minus two, and actually these tails of uh, integrals or to the differential operators never finishes, as go to, to minus infinity, like Laurent theory. <laughs> Okay, so now actually I, I'm ready to go to discussion of, of, of symmetries. Uh, so, so that's condition for commuting of these two flows. And I assume already that lambda satisfies uh, uh, semi-Hamiltonian property, this one. Okay, that's, that's semi-Hamiltonian property for this on lambda S that is satisfied. And what do we get on mu? You just multiply by denominator and you get linear PD system on mu. Okay, so lambda you consider is given. And then for mu you get linear PDS system, which is much simpler, okay? And then you try to solve it. And turns out it's actually compatible whenever this condition, uh, semi-homotaneity on lambda is assumed. So if I assume semi-homotaneity condition, then you can find infinitely many such mu. So we have actually infinitely many commuting flows. And they are parameterized by n functions of one variable. So you have a huge amount of those. 
Okay, so uh, uh, one particular occasion, of course, of this uh, commuting thing is that if you just take mu proportional to lambda, so mu is just constantly times lambda, that's a called traveling wave reduction. Um, this thing often appear in applications, but th this is much more general. Okay, so so that's conclusion. So if the system is semi homogeneous if and only if it possesses infinitely many a dynamic symmetry and parameterized by n functions of conversion. Now, conservation logs. So these are one form of the kind, well, just we underplay. So just some function time dt plus some function time dh. So of course, this DNA uh, depends on x and t also on a finite jet of a known function, which is r in this case. Okay, uh, uh, we will mostly work with translation of RN case, so X and T will not explicitly enter here. And actually, it will be enough to write here zero jet for now. So then uh, the condition of conservation laws at D omega is zero, virtue uh, modulus equation, is equivalent to, to the following relation. So that a gradient of G is proportional to, well, non proportional. So it's actually E derivative of G is proportional to E derivative of H with coefficient functionality lambda R. So it depends on R. Again, no summation here. And so we can eliminate from this equation G, right? Because you see for G is for Binus condition. So you can eliminate here G by cross derivatives. And then you get second order equation for H. Here it is. Okay. So that's strongly overdetermined PD system, linear one on H. So lambda you consider as fixed. And then when you study its involutivity, you precisely get, again, semi-Hamiltonian system. So conclusion is that the system uh, is semi-Hamiltonian if and only if it possesses infinitely many conservation laws. And again, you study functional freedom and you conclude that it depends on n function of under. Okay. Um, right, so now um, how, how can we use this? So how can we go from here to, for example, exact solutions? Namely, uh, so given hydrodynamic symmetry, um, I think also uh, this one, if you have hydrodynamic symmetry, then we can get um, uh, implicit, this implies implicit relation. That's very similar to what we saw for in Vitev Burger, right? So uh, that's just relation between dependent and independent variables. There are n dependent variables with n relations, and this allows you to find actually a solution, but again, implicitly very similar to, uh, to Hopf equation. Okay, and the formula is called generalized Hodor formula of Tsarev. Now, if we count freedom, right? So, so the, the, the uh, general solution of uh, our initial uh, equation depends on n function of n, one variable and the symmetry which we saw there depends on n function of one variable. Therefore, actually this formula gives a general local solution. So the symmetry allows to completely solve the system, of course, locally and implicitly. Okay, so conservation laws um, uh, gives a bit more complicated approach to this. Of course, with any conservation laws, we can compute first integral. So F, well, can write integral of omega, but actually it means that omega equal to df. But that's a non-local relation. Okay, so f contains something like d minus one. Uh, but still, these things uh, impose like you, you impose stationarity conditions uh, from um, conserved densities, and this gives explicit solution in some other way. There's no in general Mercer theorem, so you don't have duality between conservation laws and uh, symmetries here. Okay, so in general, if you would like to get um, uh, conservation law from symmetry, you need simple, uh, symplectic form. Uh, if you would like to get otherwise around, you need Hamiltonian structure. And in infinite dimensions, it's not the same. So um, but there are some particular cases when they actually can do things. For instance, if you assume that lambda j differentiated by ri, uh, is actually symmetric in IJ. So let me, uh, yeah. So 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 for instance, it holds when nine high tensor is zero, uh, but it's too strong condition. So it actually shall be stronger than H A equal to zero, but weaker than M A equal to zero. But there are such systems which are in between. Then the equation for symmetry would imply the equation for conservation law. So let's just go and check this. Okay. So. Um, 
So that's the equation for uh, uh, for uh, symmetries, right? And if this is symmetric in IG, and if this is also symmetric in IG, and if you multiply by denominator, then actually denoting um, mu j by djh, because symmetric, we can always do it, you get this equation. Okay, so that, that's the way to, to, to relate the transit. Okay, so that's how, how it's possible to solve such hadronic type systems. And that's two dimensional story. So that, that it's fair complete. Now, in three dimensional, first of all, um, what kind of equations can fall under these conditions? So uh, usually the, the most general systems are you just generalize the previous ones. Up. So you take quasi linear systems. Uh, so the uh, uh, unknown uh, functions uh, enter linearly in derivatives and non-linear in values. Okay, so A, B, C are some matrices, not necessarily square. Uh, you'll later see an example of why uh, I don't want to, to restrict to square, because you may think like it should be determined system like in physics, uh, but sometimes the determined system gives you no square thing. Uh, and you, some of them can be degenerate actually. That's why, for example, if A is not degenerate, I can try to invert this and yeah, simplify a bit the system, but uh, sometimes it's not easy, okay? And um, we also impose some uh, conditions, of course, we can ask this to be involutive system, and then we can compute functional freedom. And we want that the general solution depends on some number of functions of two variables. For example, if the number of functions is two, then that's more or less equivalent to uh, one single equation of second order. Mm -hmm. We should try to rewrite a system of first order. Okay, but there are some other cases and then this can grow. And I'll show later some other examples. Okay, so, so the methods to solve this consist of reduction. So we consider reductions of the forms. So we consider U, which depends on the intermediate variables R1 to Rn, and that's precisely the Riemann invariance from before, which we claim to satisfy pair of commuting equations. Okay, so they have to be, when then do the substitution uh, and uh, get the equations on R, then they uh, actually, uh, we, we, we want them to be diagonalizable as well. Okay, and then commutability system is precisely the same as for hydrodynamic symmetries in one plus one dimension. Now, the definition is that uh, system in 3D is integrable in hydrodynamic sense if for any n, there is n component reduction to, to such commuting flows. And these are parameterized by n arbitrary functions of one argument. Now, by simple counting, you see that, okay, solution here depends on some number of function of two arguments. And whatever you do here, you do reduction to 2D, and this depends on some one number of functions of one argument, even though that's a very big number. But then you get some like 2D system and solutions, again, depends on some number of functions of one variable. So definitely you're not able through this approach to get all solutions. So integrability doesn't mean you are able to get all solutions. It's not like in classical, uh, mechanics, where you're able to compute through quadratures and you're able to get all solutions. That's way too much, but there's a regular way to obtain lots of solutions. And in some sense, in some weak sense, you can even say that they are kind of dense. Okay, so um, um, let's give an example. So if one phase solution, then it's just substitution, I take this U, that's, that's all dependent variables you want to, well, to too, too many use, like, and, uh, and depends only on one R. And R in turn depends on X, Y, and T. Okay, these are dependent variables. So these are independent, U was previously dependent on X, Y, and T, but now I would like to, uh, to factor dependence through one function R. Okay, and this R has to satisfy the commuting flow in this case, uh, one dimensional, okay? And there's no obstruction to this. There's lots of such. Okay, these are nice special solutions. So if you do the Hadoop transformation, then actually you get this relation. And what does it mean? It means that actually if you fix R, you actually get what? Equation of plane. 
right? Uh, so um, this said the solutions are constant along one parameter family of planes, right? If you put R equal to C, the C gives you one parameter. And so you see that actually your space uh, is filled by one parameter family of planes on which solutions are constant. Okay, two phase solutions. So now you factorize the general solution U through two functions, R1 and R2, which depends on X, Y, T. That's again very special, right? Because two functions, well, depends on three variables. So that's very special factorization. But again, there's no obstruction for this. The only, so you can do computing flows now, now they are two dimensional. And, um, and that's again, very special solutions. What kind of solutions we obtain? So again, generalized Hadov gives now two relations. So what happens if X R? Well, then we get intersection of two planes in 3D. So what is this? It's a line. Okay, so we get that solutions will be constant along two parametric family of lines. So our space of independent variables will be um, filled with lines, right? So you actually see like space is three dimensional. It is filled by two parametric family of lines. So, so that through every point you have one parametric family of lines, right? It's not a foliation in any kind, right? The same thing with planes. So, but one and two phase solutions are very special story. Now, three phase solutions actually may not exist in general, and that's precisely the condition. It, it gives actually integrability conditions. So, so whenever you study the conditions coming from this of three phase solutions, you get the false integrability condition because if this three phase solution exists and also four phase solution exists, five phase solutions exist and so forth up to infinity, there will be no more obstruction. The reason is that whenever you write family for this of n phase solutions, so, so the compatibility conditions only involves triple differentiation. So basically, they appeal only to three phase solutions. Okay, so why only by have, three. But, uh, why do you have this terminology phase and n phase? What does it mean, n phase? Well, it comes from, from Gauss dynamic, but, but essentially it's something similar to. Um, uh, to finite gap solutions, right? So, so, so for solid on equations, we uh, uh, we have alg special algebraic solution, finite gap solutions, okay? And that's precise analogies of those. And well, these are Riemann invariants. Well, they say sometimes are called phases. Uh, that, that, that's terminology coming from Gauss dynamics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, example of DKP. So, so here is ZKP, okay? So it's written uh, in a form, it's, it's, it's not conservation laws, right? Because it's X derivative equal of something, Y derivative of something, but remember it's actually 3D now. So in 2Ds it would be a definite conservation law, but now it's not. So, but it's convenient to write it like this because it gives a way to rewrite the system. So that second order ODE would like to rewrite it in hydrodynamic form, which shall be system of first order. But when we write it like this, it's very easy. So what's in parentheses, call it Vy, right? And here's Y derivative of something, it shall be Vx, okay? So you have the split. Going back, you just eliminate V from, from, from the system, okay? But it's very convenient always to do this. So kind of this equation covers this equation, but you can also think what happens if I try to eliminate U. That's origin of double fibration, or what's called in, in integral system background transformations. It will not work for this system, but for some other things it, it will. Okay, so what we are doing for this now, that's hydrodynamic type. So we do substitution U depending on N phases. You just plug it into here. Okay, and then you do chain rule. And then you would like to get an equation for R, right? And, and you, you would like that you get two commuting flows. So you also impose those things. So whenever you see R differentiation by T, you substitute. R differentiation by I, you substitute, okay? And now you get a system which you'd like to get compatible and you, um, well, factor it and you uh, equate, so you get explicit algebraic relation for lambda. So of those two lambda and mu, one is not necessary. Lambda can be expressed for mu. So it's U plus mu I square. And also function V, uh, e is determined by u, okay? So i's derivative of v is mu i di u, no summation here. 
Okay, I will, I will stress when we need some extra. So, so, okay, so, and okay, so, so this involves mild different, mild integration, but basically you say, 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 V is determined. Now, um, so in addition to these, you get constraint coming from compatibility. Okay, so you get one thing for mu, uh, we, which I don't show how to get, but also you have to write, write the compatibility of this system and gives you this. Okay, so we get system which is called Gibbon stereo system. So look, there are uh, n square equations on mu, and there is um, n square minus n equation. Oh no, this what n choose two equations for you. Partial, uh, uh, second order. Mm -hmm. So here I not equal to j, as you can guess. Uh, also here, okay, that's also not n square. That's n square uh, minus n. Okay, um, so um, so I not equal to j, but while this one is symmetric in ij, this one is not. Okay, so this system is an involution. So you get as many solutions as you can expect from uh, local analysis. And the simplest way is the best way to do it is the following. You just ignore all lowest derivatives. So you see here, this first order derivative, that's uh, that's lower order derivative, right? So because because you enter in second order here. Okay, so you just drop it, right zero here. Okay, so here also lower order, right zero. Of course, you get a different system. However, it gives you correct functional count. So you just solve the equation when this is equal to zero, this is equal to zero, you find two n functions of one variable. Okay, so the solution of this system actually. Uh, depends on two n function of one variable. Okay, we cannot find this explicitly. We can find some special solution to these systems and then going back and recover solution to DKT. Uh, however, there is one thing when, because we are interested in the solution to DKT. And what can we do with this phase or remain invariance? We can actually reparameterize. So R1 can be mapped to function of R1. R2 can be mapped to function of R2 and so forth. And if you just look what happens in here, okay, so this derivative of this additional function will be cancel. That's because of quasi-linearity and diagonal property. So this reparameterization plays like additional symmetry. So R1 going to function of R1, R2 to a different function of R2. So you have additional n function of one variable, and they act on solution to this system. But they don't act on solution of the system. They don't change you. They just change the way this intermediate intermediate dependence is. Okay, but you are actually interesting solution u on x, t, and y. Okay, so when we interesting solution to DKP equation, so we have to do two n minus n. You get n function from there. Okay. Uh, similar. Yeah, so, sorry, inside. Boris. I have a question because you've been using this notion of involutivity. And yep. I don't think you define what you exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry for this. Let's say com compatibility. Um, but it's involutivity in any formal uh, theory of PD sense or any EDS sense, in Cartan sense. Yes. Uh, so, but if compatibility is easier, then we have to say compatibility. Okay, so let's say the following. Let me just give the definition. So, this is equation actually of, of, of uh, mixed orders, right? First order, second order. You consider it a subset of jets. You do prolongation by differentiation. Okay, in mu you get second order, in u you get third order. You look to any CZG. So it may happen that some uh, relation between those gives you some equation of lower order. And this means system is incompatible. If no, you go higher. Differentiate one more and check for this. It's just even though you can go infinitely many steps higher, actually the uh, certain Spencer cohomology vanishes and tells you that actually you, you don't need to check too high. Okay. In some simple cases, it's just like check of mixed derivatives. But the more complicated cases when you have to be a bit more careful. So I, I, I'd better say just in volume. Okay. So 4D. Okay, so last time I wrote something like second Plibansky equation, here's first Plibansky equation, um, it's also called heavenly equation um, by Plibansky himself. Uh, and um, 
again, to, to, to do hydrodynamic uh, reduction to, to this stuff, we have to write it as close to the system. Just look at this. So this depends on, well, it, it's, it's uh, um, second order equations in 4D, right? So the general solution depends on two functions of three variables, right? That's how Cauchy data you do, right? So for example, fix it for t equal to constant. Okay, now, uh, so, uh, so um, we can uh, rewrite uh, this as first order quasi-linear system as follows. Let me introduce notation UTXA, UYZB, and UTYC. And then, of course, UX that I can find from this algebraically, AB minus one or C. And then I write, I write all possible differential relations between these letters, right, between U uh, in terms of ABC. So I get one, two, three, four. Okay, if I write it as matrix form, then the matrices will be four times three, right? There's four equations on three letters. So it appears sometimes that I actually have to do it, right? So you see, I, I just like start from the German system, but finish with four equations on three dependent variables. But it's still determined. Okay, so you can, how, how can you actually know it? What's the geometry behind it? It's hard to separate. You compute it and you see it's actually co dimensional. Okay, so play the same game. Uh, substitute uh, ABC through phases R1, R2, and so forth. Impose commuting hydrodynamic, uh, com commuting flows. Now that's actually three flows, all commuting between themselves. Obtain Gibbon set of system. Now that's a bit bigger. I didn't include it. Again, solution to, to corresponding Gibbon set of field depends on three N functions. Minor no three parameterizations are two functions so far. So two N functions of one variable. So that's what we will get uh, solutions to Lebanski equation. <laughs> And in general, system with d independent variables is integrable by the method of hydrodynamic reductions. If for any n, there's n component reductions parameterized, but that many functions, d minus two times n functions of one argument. So every time you try to reduce to 2d, right? And for 2d, the story is, is fair complete. Okay. So now, about equivalence approaches, I've been talking very long now about this hydrodynamic reduction, and that's not something that I am expert in. Um, but so, so, so that's very computational story, but simultaneously it gives you a way to obtain explicit solutions, right? So that's, that's what people understand by integrability. Now, but previously we we're talking about lux pairs. So how is this related? Well, Let's consider some specific types of PD system. We will talk about general PD systems next lecture. So, but I'd like to consider PD system with a subject to the method of hydrodynamic reductions. In particular, you noted previously that there's a virtual translation in the environment. Okay. But we'll do even more restriction. So, for example, Plebansky equations, first and second, they actually Hirota type equation. What does it mean? It means when we write the relation, only highest derivative enters, well, you second derivative enters. No independent, no dependent, no first derivative center, right? So everything enters through only uh, pure to get. Okay. Or another type of PD which we can consider is a full quasi linear uh, type of PDs, so also second order, right? So you see that second order derivatives enter linearly, but the coefficients may depend on uh, first derivatives. Okay. Now, in 2013, when I was uh, invited to the topic by um, Jennifer Aponto, so we um, addressed the question of equivalence, and uh, we proved the following theorem. For some of the types above, in particular those two types, Hirota type and quasi-linear second order, uh, so in 3D and 4D, precisely in those dimensions, the integrability by the method of hydrodynamic reductions is equivalent to existence of a dispersional slug pair. Okay, and that's DLP condition. Uh, in fact, when we in 3D, we can change to a uh, dispersional Zahar, Zaharov pair, which we also uh, showed an example uh, in, in previous lecture. In 4D, 
No. So the proof of this theorem was quite computational. So basically, uh, since hydrodynamic integrability is, is very computational, so you have to compute uh, hydrodynamic integrability, integrability conditions. That's huge algebraic ideal. And then you have to show that that's actually equivalent to, to, to the uh, probability condition for, for DLP. Well, moreover, the PD is a reduction uh, of integrable background geometry. And in 3D, that's Einstein Weil. And in 4D, it's self duality. Okay. So, what does it mean, reduction? Reduction, it's a bit complicated. I will not completely tell you today what it means. But basically, you know, whenever you have PD, you can do different things with them. For example, you can try to do symmetry reduction. Right, but that's not the one. Right, you, you can try to do some kind of uh, ansatz un or um, compact, co some differential constraint or, or things like this. That's that's rather closer to this. Uh, but any reduction, whatever you do, so if you get a reduced system, it means that any solution of reduced system is obtained from some solution of the system. So it's just like inclusion of solution spaces. Okay, uh, that's not very constructive what I say. It's, it's good to keep in mind this description, but it's not very constructive. Okay, now I'd like to talk a bit about those geometries. So, um, uh, and um, this is actually, I kind of start moving towards the main topic of the next lecture. So um, next lecture, I would like to have more geometric. So, so this hydrodynamic reduction, it's more mass, mass physical. So there's um, maybe more computational part and uh, geometry appears uh, from now. Okay, so this is 3D, it's special type of conformal structure in 3D. So, so, so what is the data? First of all, what is wild structure? So wild structure is a Conformal metric structure, so metric of uh, Riemannian or Lorentzian signature via N3D, plus a torsion free connection. Uh, I didn't write it, it has to be torsion free. Uh, that preserves. Okay, so D uh, has to preserve conformal plus. What does it mean? Uh, so if you take representative metric C and we differentiate it, then we had something proportional to G. So the coefficient of proportionality is what? It's one form, right? Because here we can fit into a uh, covariant derivative we can, it's vector. So this vector has to be fit in here. So omega is one form. Uh, so particular uh, case of this, of course, it would be levi Civita, right? So if you take metric and you take levi Civita, you just get zero in the right hand side. So, so for any levi Civita connection of any representative of form of classes, do. But that's not actually not the, the most general class. So whenever you do change of conformal representative, uh, then this omega will be changed by exact form. And so at least locally, so if you start with Levitivita do conformal modification, then you still get exact form. So so omega, if it is non-close, and of course you cannot get any Levitivita. That's way back. So if you just specify, take omega and d, and you can specify d plus torsion free condition, uh, then it will be wild structure. So out of d, d and omega, you can start with actually two things. Uh, it is generically. So uh, most complicated story, what, what happens if you start with d and omega, how you get z back, right? So that, that, that's complicated stuff. Okay, so now, um, if we work with general linear convection, then, well, what, what can we compute by connections? The first idea is, of course, you compute the uh, curvature tensor. It's complicated object, so Ricci tensor is a bit easier object, but still it has to be split into skew and symmetric part. And for general linear connection, not for metric connections, skew part may be non-zero, but it's not very much interesting. It's just proportional to the omega, so it doesn't give any interesting constraint. The symmetric part actually is interesting, because we can impose this condition which calls Einstein while condition. So, so, so reach is proportional to G. Uh, well, contrary to metric situation, the co proportionality coefficient need not to be constant. So it's just kind of function. So, um, so that's the Einstein while condition. So let's just count what's written here. So lambda is unspecified here. 
So G has six components. So here's six equations, but lambda is unspecified, eliminated, you get five equations. Okay, so um, uh, then G is usually a, a given conformal structure. So you have and the question when uh, does the given conformal structure um, uh, can be uh, can be Einstein while right? So when you can you find potent uh, while covector omega so that you have this equation? So then if you consider omega as unknown, right? So they get three components and actually have five equations. So you may think that's over the German system. Okay. So in fact, um, it's not um, because there are some gauge invariants because it's all equations are different morphism variants and we can eliminate this. Okay, and I will do it uh, in next to slide. Okay, so here I just mentioned that when omega equal to zero, D is Levitch beta, and this becomes just uh, Einstein equation. So I send while it's different generation of Einstein structures. Okay, in 4D, uh, the round geometry, we just announced it to be uh, um, integrable. So, uh, David Calderban has a big paper about uh, integrable um, um, background geometries where from gauge theory he motivates why those has to be. But here I just use it as postulate. There's those two to are integrable. And for now, I don't explain why, but next slide I will. Okay, so, so in 4D, uh, what the uh, conformal geometry was just usual conformal geometry. There's no specification here like Einstein well, it's just conformal geometry, right? So the fundamental conformal environment is while uh, curvature. Um, and if we are in C unitary, all pluses or, or in neutral C unitary, two pluses, two minuses, and 40 star operator uh, is involution on the space of uh, while tensors. Right? Uh, star can act on many things in particular can act on uh, symmetric or wedge power of tension um, minus traces as, 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 for, as for a while okay and uh, then hot star on the space is uh, square to one so therefore this space splits into um, two subspaces a direct sum so actually the space has dimension 10 so it splits into five plus five and w splits into two parts w plus and w minus Called self dual and alpha to self dual. Okay, now and the self duality equation is this that star of W is W or equivalently that W minus is zero. Okay, and uh, so these are five equations. Okay, five equations on what? So there's five equations on, um, on how many components do we have for formal structure? Uh, 10 for metric. Right in 4D minus one due to, to scaling, so it's nine. So five equations on nine unknowns. Right, so it looks like over determined, but it's not. Right, so if I go back again to here to do this counting, so so um, uh, G has three components. Omega, so I'm oh, sorry. Uh, G has six components. Right, and my minus conformal scaling five. So omega has three, five plus three is eight. So it's eight unknowns in, 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 this, in this plus this, All right? Um, and five equations, right? So this seems to be like even undetermined systems, less equations than unknowns, but it's actually it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly here, there's less equations than unknowns seems to be undetermined, but actually it's not. And why? Because because there's gauge symmetry. There's different morphism group acting here. We have to eliminate this freedom. Okay. Now, actually, these two equations, why why integrable background geometry? Uh, background I will explain next time. But integrable, it's because they actually these equations are integrable in several senses, um, and. Um, well, for ours will be important lux integrability, but they are us actually as integrable in twister sense. And usually when equations are integrable in any sense, then their reductions are also integrable, which means you take the original equations and you add something more, well, compatible. For example, we can consider self-dual Einstein equations. That's 
overdetermined. So we, in addition to this equation, we put all Feinstein condition and it becomes bigger PD system. So as, as equation meaningful becomes small, right? But that's, that's integral, right? That's precisely led to, to, to self-dual gravity Henry equations of the mass well, so, so some other PDs can be obtained as reductions of those. And so that was the reason people were calling those Einstein value of self duality as master equations. And um, there was actually uh, another explanation of why they should be called master equations, which I will give uh, with the, uh, in the next lecture. So, so, so that actually, well, it, it was mentioned as a theorem joint with Ferraponta that other integral equations are obtained as reductions. That's the reason. Okay, so, so they are obtained for those two. Okay, so explicitly. So now uh, let me revisit Einstein wire. So according to Hitchin, system of Einstein wire equations is integrable. Um, uh, however, as in Hitchin, it's still with diffeomorphism freedom. So you have to even think uh, what is the a space of solution, right? Because the gauge freedom is not eliminated. So, so it doesn't look like the determined system. And uh, if you try to do Cartan test, so, so th th that's a very good exercise if there is different freedom there. Okay, so we do a gauge, we do proper gauge. So, so it means we, we, we do some normalizations. Uh, in terms of patient, it means that actually we, we are going to prescribe uh, G and omega in some very specific form. For example, if you look to to G, right? So it's it's kind of specific form, but um, well, this look looks very strange. But at least when you look to omega, for example, there's no dx. Okay, so uh, all in all, so so that's form for G for representative for conformal structure, and that's omega, and both they define wild structure. They depend on two arbitrary functions u and v. Now we we impose on u and v two uh, constraints. So operator p, nonlinear operator p, applied to u is equal to this low order story, and to v gives zero. So here's operator p. Well, actually, it uses u and v, but this equation is quasi linear, therefore I can just take away the operator. Um, so and so the theorem states that. Um, if you take this on that important and style value condition that we get a determined system of constraints. So we get that actually this is Einstein while if and only if we have these two second order PDs on the UNV fold. Okay, uh, more, uh, a stronger statement in the theorem is that locally all Einstein while structure is such. Okay, so we don't lose anything. So in particular, because the system is in, well, it's German, so it's automatically an evolution. So then it's easy to compute its functional freedom. So you see, you have two uh, second order equations in U and V, and therefore the functional freedom is a general solution that depends on four functions of two variables. And this actually confirms Cartan count because the first person who did uh, count for, um, uh, uh, freedom uh, in evolution uh, was in his paper when he related um, Einstein wall structure to short order ODs. Okay, so in fact, the alignment here to very particular form to this form was specially done in order to, to hit, uh, well, this form, it, it system has a name. It's called Monaco Fantini system known in mass physics. And it's integrable in lux sense, namely, so here's rank two distribution. So you see two vector fields, but they don't live on the solution, right? Solution is of course the of to base manifold to X, Y, T, but leave to, to the space of just three U and V. Okay, so U and V here is background functions, background solutions. But it's, it's in correspondence space, in extended space, you see also lambda parameter. That's precisely this one, P1 uh, uh, cover, uh, P, P, P1 bundle over. Uh, this and on, on this, over the solution. Okay, so we have rank two distribution. Its Frobenius condition is equivalent to Monakov Santini system. Okay, so that's last thing. Now, 4D is uh, 
a similar story. Uh, the integrability of um, self-duality equations or anti-self-duality equation doesn't matter. So, so it's uh, up to choice of orientation. It was actually established by Penrose. So I presented like 3D and 4D, but historically it was opposite. Uh, first was the work of Penrose, um, and then Hitchin found corresponding production theory. Um, and actually, in 3D, it's quite mini twister, not twister, because dimension is small. So, um, again, um, proof of Penrose, that's uh, called very physical paper, is gra graviton construction. Um, uh, this is, uh, doesn't do any, any gauging. So, so, so uh, we write the system explicitly. So, so a ASD system. So uh, that's joint with much too nice case as well as previous one. Uh, much like small by some reasons a a ASD, not SD. So we, we wrote ASD conformal structure of neutral uh, signature is given as follows. So here's metric representative. Again, two functions U and V are involved. It's a background solution to certain systems. So namely, G is anti-self-dual depending on some choice of orientation or on the solution, if and only if we have two equations on U and V. Okay, so is there given through operator Q? So a second order operator, also involving Q and V, by the way, right? So it's, it's of course, nonlinear equation. And you see that after you apply Q, we also apply one differentiation and very similar here. So these two equations have short order. Okay, so, what is the functional freedom? So we have two short order equations on two functions u and v. So this is the determinant system by no problem with involutivity. Count tells us that she shall be from, from Cauchy data, six functions of three variables. That's functional freedom. Okay, and that's precisely um, well, what um, we don't remember. Well, probably not Penrose, uh, probably it was later. Yes, so, but, but that's count for, uh, for local um, uh, functional freedom of self-dual structures. Okay, so now the statement is that uh, actually if you look to this freedom, uh, to, to, to the system, it, it's written here as uh, to two, um, uh, two short order uh, PDs on, on two unknowns. It can be written a bit differently as three second order PDs on three unknowns, but the count is, will be the same. And it is lux integral, so so much more precise. So that's precisely lux representation. That's two uh, vector fields. They define rank to distribution on what on corresponding space, right? So so here's a partial lambda, sub del lambda. So so you have to go solution is four dimensional, but corresponding space is five dimensional. You have to go up. There is a rank to distributions. Frobenius condition is equivalent uh, to uh, the PD system. So it's, it's integrable in lock sense. Okay, so um, I think I kind of almost ready to stop here. So there's just few references um, uh, about uh, this talk, um, and um, and I uh, yeah, of course I, I cannot list, list list all references. There's many more people who, who played in. Uh, and as previous time, maybe I would like to finish this homework. Okay, so that's a homework. It's more geometric than, um, well, I don't know. Previous one was was very, very parabolic, very geometric. Uh, so this one, it's a bit different flavor. Okay, so so uh, self-dual structure. So one, one good example is CP2, good to check it. So CP2 is self-dual structure, actually a uh, conform of uh, class of Kubinish 2D gives precisely self dual metric. If you change orientation, then SD becomes ASD. And uh, that's, uh, that's easy computation. The good uh, question is, what about CP2 plus CP2 bar? Well, you have to use actually here to answer this some functional inequality and some rigidity theory. So that's the um, um, first question. Uh, so the, another one um, is a bit more straightforward to compute. So take CP2. Uh, it's homogeneous space, um, SU3 over U2. SU3 is precisely the uh, maximal isometry group of Benish 2D. So keep it Benish 2D. 
uh, well, but think about it as conformal structure, okay? Uh, so, but even uh, as conformal structure, it's symmetry group is still eight dimensional on this one. Uh, take a close to one dimensional subgroup, FO2 inside, and do a, uh, and do quotient. So this is gives you you can take a vector field quotient. This you get three dimensional manifold with Einstein wall structure. So what is this Einstein wall structure? And third one, uh, that's to understand what this omega is. Take round metric on a three. Um, so, so the metric is given, right? So you have G, but then you can look to omegas. So you, you look to uh, just undetermined omega, right? So, 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 so and you um, ask uh, what are possibilities for omega to satisfy Einstein while conditions. Okay, and um, uh, well, uh, naturally isometry group at X on everything. So you have to quotient the space of solutions by SO3. And what, what is this quotient? Okay, so, so how many parameters was damaged? So that's um, my homework for the next two weeks. I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. Uh, questions, please. I have a question. Uh, I've actually, uh, you were saying that uh, uh, there are uh, that um, when you explain what you mean by involutivity, that you mean it's uh, you can think about compatibility. And then you said there are all these different notions of involutivity in uh, for integrable systems, and you said they're kind of equivalent. So I first of all, I don't know any except. The, the one by Carton, and I wanted to sort of, uh, um, if you could uh, list some of the sort of tests that are known as involutivity, and is there is it really shown that they're equivalent? In what sense? Uh, yeah, first of all, it's, it's not for integrable systems, it's just for any PDs. Yeah, PD, sorry, sorry, yes, yes. Oh, for absolutely any PDs, yes, systems, yes, yes. right? So there's two ways. Either you work formally with PDs, and then you need the framework of just space. So you view PD, uh, you, you you view uh, uh, PD as submanifolds uh, in jet space, and then you do geometric prolongation. Okay, and the statement is that this tower of prolongations it's it's by bundle. That's what's called formal integrability, or the same as compatibility, or the same as well. But involutivity is a bit trickier here. So involutivity starts from some moment, you need additional condition. You actually have to assure that all uh, Spencer homology vanish. Why is this? Because actually Spencer, second Spencer homology uh, of symbolic system associated with PDE uh, count um, compatibility constraints. So for any system, compatibility constraints can be considered as, as kind of curvature sitting inside second Spencer homology. Okay, but, but this algebraic object and Spencer cohomology just vanish after some prolongation. Okay, so if you go sufficiently high in prolongation, then after this moment, there's no chance that there will be any compatibility condition and system is called involute. So if, if you arrive to this, uh, to this uh, level and you have bundles, there's no compatibility, additional compatibility conditions, then actually, um, yeah, then actually from this moment you're involute. Uh, these uh, subtlety with Spencer uh, and the additional prolongation, sometimes it's confused and people uh, actually confuse compatibility and volatility. So, so um, okay, that's one same story. The other story, if, if you walk uh, like for a differential algebraic system and you walk with uh, uh, differential ideal. Okay, so, so then basically you from the very beginning can say, okay, we go to differential closure of the ideal. But actually, you're interested in uh, inductive process of closing. If you add differential, you compute differential series and so forth, and you, you have to find corresponding counterpart. That's second notion of relativity. And third one, you just completely forget the PD system. You introduce letters like A, B, C, as I did before, and you write differential relations between the corresponding um, letters. You get EDS system. 
right? So you get just fine dimensional manifold, EDS system, and you are in the realm of Cartan. So you study this as the involutivity for the corresponding exterior differential system. So all of these three are the same. But actually, uh, like, like for one and two, it's like almost obvious. For one and three, it's a cell theory. So that these two things are equivalent, that's not completely obvious. Uh, it's uh, certain, not long, but a nice theorem by Jean Paul Serre. One other thing I can ask you, if there's no one else to ask questions. You were introducing when you said at the beginning you had this nine horse tensors, and then you introduced some other thing. Uh, I think Hartius. Um, Hartius. Yeah, and um, so you have this uh, sort of. I think geometrically, I was wondering. I've never uh, come across this this gadget. At least nine holes. You know, if the diffeomorphism, this A is a diffeomorphism of the tangent bundle has, you know, let's say arises from this almost complex or a complex structure or paracomplex, you know, it shows some integrability. What is the sort of geometric um, interpretation of this other one? Does it have it? Well, you have a splitting into eigenspaces, right? Or, or of your operator field. Yeah. And then you can ask many questions. So one question which you ask, when you can actually bring operator to constant terms. Right, when this field of operators is integrable. And nine case in most cases answers this. That's integrability of a field of operators. But now you relax, you forget about eigenvalues, right? You look to only to eigenspaces. And you say, okay, what about this? Right, so you're not interested in eigenvalues. So what about this? When, when, when is this integrable? Hunt just tells you. Uh, it's, that, that, that's rough, right? Because like, uh, for example, if A is semi simple, that's actually correct about nine highs, right? But if there's Jordan blocks, you have to be a bit more careful. So, so but um, more or less that's the statement. And both actually, nine highs and high is that here in integrable system. For example, nine highs appears when you talk about compatible Poisson brackets, Bach Hamiltonian formalism and, and so forth. And then you naturally get, get an operator field, which is called recursion operator in the theory. And yes, it has to have a zero and high stands. Uh, so, so yes, it may be all right that it appears maybe more often than high stands. Thank you. Maybe I can cook, say something. There's a comment. Yes, There's a comment, historical comment. I, whenever I listen to uh, talks of mathematicians about uh, self-dual equations in four dimensions or einstein wild equations in three dimensions, uh, they somehow refer only to mathematicians. And I, I've never heard a mathematician telling, telling that, for example, einstein wild equations came from Hermann Weil in 1919, I think, when he tried to unify it Electromagnetism with, that's with, true. Of course that's true. with yes, gravity, yes. and that was the first attempt of any kind of unification of gravitation with some other fields, and this was introduced in four dimensions. And I mentioned, I I, I, I do mention this because because uh, I remember that one of our friends, one when I said that. There are these equations coming from physics, like Einstein Weil. Uh, uh, this mathematician said, How it is? Einstein Weil equations were introduced by Paul Todd, or something like this. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is about, about this self duality uh, setting and just uh, cracking uh, the, the, the problem and attributing it totally, totally to Roger Penrose, as, as you did. And I think that it's, first of all, it is not very accurate because, because I, I would attribute everything to Penrose because I, I, I love everything what Penrose does, but in, in particular, this, this self-dual equations in dimension four, 
were almost simultaneously cracked independent, okay, dependently actually. So it was cracked by two people, but in the in the context of of uh, Ritchie flat, and this was the self-dual Ritchie flat, and it was cracked almost simultaneously and independently by Ted Newman, who just recently died, unfortunately, and by Plebinsky. They they had absolutely independent independent method of cracking self-dual uh, Ritchie flat equations. And then Ted told about this, what he did to Roger, and Roger, Roger get this twister interpretation of this, what, what Ted Newman did. And all three people, which were essentially at the same time, they did it in a Ritchie flat case. In the conformal case, I don't believe that it is it should be attributed to Penrose. It was much later. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, 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 well, uh, it's of course not, not uh, straightforward to find it in, in 1976 paper by Penrose, uh, but Arthur Bers actually attributes De it. Defi definitely it is not in 19, 19, six, uh, 1966 okay. paper of Penrose. There is not because there is, this is devoted to, to, to Ricci flat equations and his interpretation, the historical interpretation of this, what did uh, 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 Ted Newman. So actually the people who really cracked Essentially, the self-dual case in four dimensions were Ted Newman and 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 uh, Jerzy Plebański. Then, if you release, when you know what they did and what Penrose did eventually, then if you release Richie flatness, then you can just using their method, you can just this do this what what is in the conformal case, because essentially the the the, the cracking moment was cracking the the the, the richie flat case okay that's right but but a twister program is actually manifestly conformally invariant right so so whenever yes whenever yes yes but I, but but i don't i don't i don't understand why you just attribute it to roger if there were three people who really cracked the thing and then the the, the conformal case was just piece piece of cake once the the richie flat was done well, because it was a bit more general, right? Because, uh, because uh, yes, maybe you are right, right? But I, I say, I, I take my inspiration in but the can, book. But can, can, you, can, you show, can you show me the paper of Roger that he does the conformal case? Exactly. Show yeah, I was me. thinking it is, is graviton uh, construction. No, uh, in the graviton, no. In gra I mean, it's, in it's, it's, it's not explicitly, not, as I said. It's not, nonlinear graviton is not conformal. No. No, if you do twister, it is conformal, right? Because the whole twister theory is conformal in fact. Right, so, so. Not really, okay. We disagree on this. So, so somehow I wouldn't attribute this to, to, to Roger. I, I can attribute a lot of things to Roger Penrose, but not, not this one. Right, I mean, but like, essentially, like if you take, take the paper by Atiyah uh, Hitchin Zinger, right? Uh, where they have a different approach to Penrose theorem, and of, of course they get their no, own. No, Atia, Atia, Hitchin, and Singer they did conformal in split signature. That's 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 correct. But but they, 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 they but Penrose them. Penrose in his paper Herichi flatness. He, okay, he okay, fine. Choosing, he, he was he was choosing the conformal factor. He was never, not even thinking about conformal factor. I agree with you uh, if you do literally, right? But like, if you think about the twister approach, well, yes, it, it is about conformal. Oh, but, but in the same sense, Newman's approach and Plebinsky's approach was conformal if you release the uh, the, the, the one condition of Ritchie flatness. <laughs> okay, that's fine, that's fine, yes. So, so attributing it to Penrose is simply wrong. Or, or, or see on only to Penrose because Penrose, Penrose was really intrigued by this, what that Newman did, that Newman called him, showing him his solution of Ritchie flat self-dual problem. And as Ted told me, then Roger was not answering for something like several weeks. And one day he called him that he interpreted this, what, 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 what Ted did. And so how somehow, <laughs> Attributing everything to Roger is simply wrong. Of course, I agree with this. It's like attributing everything to Riemann or, or whatever, right? Uh, so, but uh, the story is that I 
that self-dual uh, Einstein equations is really reduction of self-dual equations, right? And then I mentioned the integrability of the self-dual equations through twister methods. I was so thinking you, so like this. So you this, should attribute it rather, rather to Atiyah, Hitchin, and Singer because they were doing conformal thing, but in this. But then you can say they used only Riemannian signatures. But then they were doing Riemannian right? right? Roger was doing in, in, the, in the complex case, do, the, do, uh, uh, Plebanski was doing in the complex case, and Newman was doing in the complex case. All three people were doing in complex case, but they have different focus. They, they, they actually was, were finding this Einstein condition as particular difficulty. So they, if, 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 if somebody told them that they should just do a conformal case, that they would do it immediately because the, the, the method of Plebanski, the method of Newman worked for, 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 the, for what was specific for getting conformally, uh, conformally self-dual thing, or at least dual. They, they wanted to have that one, one, one piece of, of vile curvature is zero. They wanted to do this, and on top of this, they only put the Einstein condition. So they were the people do, who cracked it, okay? I just returning to the beginning of your remark, right? So, so you said that mathematicians always cite mathematicians, and like Hermann Weil was forgotten. I used to think about Hermann Weil actually as a mathematician, even though, <laughs> he 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 made good foundation of uh, relativity theory. The, the, but yes, I just forgot German, about German him because Bi I had no was, space. Was, was really a hero. He was he was that criticized by, criticized by Einstein when he made his 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 uh, Einstein val equations and his conformal generalization and unification of electromagnetism with with gravitation. He was that much criticized by Einstein that he essentially withdraw from general relativity and he started to be only concerned with quantum mechanics because he was that, that's horribly, right he was horribly I, criticized by einstein i don't think only by einstein i also think, think also by eddington right so remember this uh, anecdote that uh, some journalist uh, said uh, ask eddington that people say that there's only three persons the world who understand uh, relativity, it's so, it's so complicated. He said, okay, Einstein, me, who's the third one? Yes. Uh, that's a story about Hermann Weil, right? 